he told me to take it in so that if there was any validity to the fact that this was a flying saucer, if there was any validity to the fact that this was a flying saucer. Meet Lieutenant Walter Hout. Our first lieutenant at the time, he was Roswell's public information officer in July 1947. In this interview, Hout talks about the day his commander, Colonel Blanchard, issued the famous Roswell Flying Saucer press release. And what did Colonel Blanchard want you to do? <clears throat> he told me to prepare a release uh, with basically the information that he gave me over the phone when it was done to take it into community and deliver it, hand deliver it to the four uh, news media we had in Roswell at that time, which is what I did. Uh, as best you recall, would that uh, have happened, uh, the initial phone conversation during the morning or in the afternoon? To the best of my remembrance, it would have been in the morning. And I would have to guess somewhere, I would guess around 9 o'clock. The only reason I come up with that figure is that had to be done and gotten into town so that it would have gone to the uh, record in time for them to set it and to have gone ahead and run it in that uh, day's evening paper. And would you know what day this happened? I would say the 8th of July, 1947. And that was the date of the Roswell Daily Record yes. article? Okay. What, uh, once you wrote up the news release, then what happened after that? As I said, I, I had to take it into town. Uh, he told me to take it in so that if there was any validity to the fact that this was a flying saucer, that and information got out uh, to other news media other than our own, he felt that he wanted our people there in Roswell to have first crack at it. Didn't want them to feel that he had given the information out to someone who got it to the uh, press services uh, outside of Roswell. Clearly, Hout cannot adequately explain why Blanchard issued the press release. In this next clip, Hout describes Blanchard as strangely calm, considering news of a flying saucer would change the world. Did you see any of this wreckage or any, any of the material? None whatsoever. Do you believe that Colonel Blanchard had seen it? Yes, I do. And why do you feel that way? Uh, I don't think he would have been so... Uh, I don't want to say gung-ho, but I don't think he would have been so confident in his comment of, we have a flying saucer in our possession, or parts of a flying saucer. I don't, over this many years, I don't remember the exact verbiage, but uh, he wasn't overly excited. He wasn't flipping about it. It was just a normal, routine type of conversation that uh, we'd have when he'd call me and say he wants this done. So Colonel Blanchard was not overly excited? This was just a normal, routine conversation about a flying saucer that Marcel had recovered? Would you have any reason to believe that Colonel Blanchard would have mistaken this material for being any form of weather balloon or observation device? I don't think there's a one chance in a billion that he would not have recognized a weather balloon. Uh, he was not, he was a West Point graduate, class of 37, as best I recall, uh, had gone up through from second lieutenant up to colonel, not too many years. Uh, very intelligent individual, not the type to just jump off on tangents. I think he knew a weather balloon if he had seen it, and that would have been the end of that. He wouldn't have gone anywhere with it. He would have told uh, Major Marcel, uh, this is a weather balloon. Then again, Major Marcel would have known that it wasn't a weather balloon. That was my next question. Is it possible that Major Marcel would have been misled? No. Is it possible that Major uh, Colonel Blanchard 
might have been misinformed by somebody who told them about, told him about what this wreckage was without having seen it for himself. I would doubt that very much. I don't think uh, he would have uh, taken the actions he did by taking, going down to operations with it. Uh, if he was there in the operations building, he certainly saw it. Uh, I'm sure that Major Marcel had talked to him and had given him some pretty sage advice as far as he was concerned. Um, metallurgy of it. Uh, I don't know how much Jess Marcel knew about it, but he, again, was a very intelligent individual and not the type that would just jump at uh, anything and try to carry it to, to an end. And between the two of them, I'm certain that one or the other would have called the other one's hand if it was a weather balloon. Okay, so let's see if I get this straight. Blanchard knew what a weather balloon was. He was a West Pointer. He was a good officer. Smart. Not the type to go off on a tangent. How it says Blanchard saw the debris before authorizing the press release. And yet, in this next clip, we see that Marcel showed his family the debris in the early morning of July 8th and told them it was a flying saucer. Uh, Jess, I wonder if I can take you back to uh, the night that your father came home. Uh, about what, do you have an idea about what time of the night that was and what you were doing at the time? Well, I was asleep for one thing. <clears throat> I'm not, I want to say it was very early hours. It was either very late in the evening or very early in the morning uh, when he came back here. And uh, I had awakened both myself and my mother. And why did he wake you wake you both up? He had something he wanted to show us. This uh, apparently was some debris or something he brought in from the field uh, at that time. And I understand he was on his way to the air base to deliver this, but he felt that this was unusual enough that he wanted us to see it first before he delivered it to his proper destination. And what happened uh, What happened after he woke you up? And well, he was, uh, as I recall, very excited. And uh, again, he said, I want to show you something. And uh, uh, so I got my, my house coat on, as did my mother. And uh, he had gone out to the car and brought back in some metallic debris. I believe it was in a box. I know. Uh, I don't recall whether I walked outside with him or not, but uh, he made it seem like the, the 1942 Buick we had was loaded with the stuff uh, in the back seat and in the trunk area. At any rate, uh, he brought the material in and spread it on the kitchen floor and uh, in an effort to try to piece it together like a jigsaw puzzle to get some idea of the form of this, but unfortunately there was too much of it too finely divided to do that. Uh, how old were you at the time? Uh, Eleven. Uh -huh. okay. And uh, when he spread all this material out on the floor, what was your impression about the, what this what this material was like? How would you describe it? Well, initially, just looking at it, well, what's this all about? You know, sleep you. Know, but then when you get down and looking at it, uh, it was the unusual character of the debris. and. Uh, I want to say that he said something like this is from a flying saucer, but I'm not sure that he said that, but the meaning was clear that this is something very special, and he wanted us to look at it. And what's your record? Next, we hear from Jesse Marcel Sr. himself. ...was waiting for him, but he was told not to say anything by his commander, General Ramey. The newsmen saw very little of the material, a very small portion of it. And none of the important things, like these uh, members that had these hieroglyphics or, or markings on, they wanted me to tell them about it, and I couldn't say anything. And when the general came in, he told me not to say anything, that he would handle it. Had a boy, Jesse. So let's recap what we've got so far. We've got Hout saying Blanchard wasn't even sure Marcel recovered a flying saucer. Jesse Marcel Jr. says his father believed he found a flying saucer. 
And Jesse Sr. confirms the press conference debris is the same stuff he picked up a day earlier at Brazel's ranch. Consequently, I believe the only conclusion is that Blanchard knowingly lied about his flying saucer. As for Jesse Marcel Sr., the photos from the press conference clearly show either a weather balloon or a Project Mogul balloon. And that, my friends, is why Major Marcel did not recover a flying saucer in July 1947.